so so i think we have already know about this properties and intellectual property rights how many types of intellectual property rights are there uh, and uh, few uh, have the overview of indian ipr ecosystem so uh, before uh, just going through the different type of case studies i will discuss one second i just uh, have to reach my slides yeah yeah so <clears throat> there are some statutory obstacles to patentability ma'am can you please brief me that what you have gone through in the last four days because have you uh, have you have any idea of uh, like uh, fees and forms you need to file everything yeah uh i think uh forms and fees and all has been discussed and about the different uh, different ip aspects so today as uh, i think it was given to me informed to me uh, uh you would like to discuss about the ips in biotechnology okay so you you got any idea about statutory obstacles or patentability uh, like section 3 non patentable section like this things oh no that was not discussed maybe you can discuss that yes yeah so uh, so we all know that when we file some kind of uh, intellectual property right so there are some few hurdles that you have to clear to get the right uh, on your name so to claim the ownership on that because see one thing that intellectual property rights are all these uh, definitions are all fine but uh, when you are getting any kind of ip rights or especially patents uh, the government of india or the intellectual property office is snatching the right of 140 crore people and uh, they are uh, he, uh, it, it is given the right to you so you uh, you understand how difficult it is and how monopolized it is because this is an exclusive and monopoly right so we are a legal country and as per our constitution every citizen has equal right but here what happens is we are snatching the right of 140 crore people and we are giving the right to a particular entity or particular person so that there are so many hurdles so to give that right to a particular person he must be he should be deserving one so that's why there are some statutory hurdles we are checking all the parameters we are checking that your application is for uh, fitting as per the law or not but still there are some statutory hurdles uh, to get a patent so today we will discuss just all the statutory hurdles then we will discuss different type of case study and how this statutory hurdles really Save the Indian uh, IPR ecosystem in the past decade. So let's talk about the statutory hurdles of patentability. The criteria for fulfilling patentability requirements are the inventiveness and industrial application. That means whenever you are applying for an IP application before Indian patent office, the the your application or your invention should be novel. That means it should be new. It should be inventiveness. Ah, uh, it should contain inventiveness. That means it should have some inventive merit. That means it is a significant technical advancement. over the existing uh, prior uh, novelty and inventiveness are two different kind of things the novelty is it should be new and the inventive step that is the most significant part of the ip ip specification or when we are checking most of the application fall under this inventive step uh, hurdle or problem otherwise in section 3 idea uh, non patentable section 3 so what exactly inventive step is inventive step mean we are checking whether your application has any significant technical advancement or not so if there is no significant technical advancement we cannot say that it is having some inventive merit so it should solve the purpose that should that mean any is there any existing problem your invention should solve the existing problem and have a very beautiful and solution for that problem so that is known as inventiveness and the third one is industrial application that mean your invention should have the It, that uh, we can apply it in a industrial purpose that means if your if your invention is not serving a purpose of industrial application then we can reject uh, your uh, the patent uh, because of this lack of industrial application but barely i have seen uh, in my career that any application that is falling under this industrial application case because most of the invention in any small uh, from any small invention to big invention that will definitely fall under this industrial application uh, that will it, it will pass the industrial application phase because everything has some kind of industrial applicability so the third the fourth one that is the most vital form of uh, statutory obstacle obstacle is section 3 non patentable that is non patentable section 3 under uh, indian patent act 1970 so what section 3 says so uh, whenever you apply any ip right you have to clear novelty right i have told that so that's fine you have to clear inventiveness that's fine you have to clear that industrial application part so most of most of the ip uh, application or most of the patent application they used to clear all these three things but what they lack is section non uh, non patentable section 3 uh, uh, like not requirements so what is 
exactly non patentable section 3 says that these are what is a non patentable in india so there are so many sections that mean 3a 3b 3c 3d 3e 3z 3h there are so many sections up to 3n but whatever whatever the section that is relevant to the field of biotechnology and agriculture biotechnology i have cited here so the first section is section 3a what section 3a says that mean again i am repeating that all the sections if you are falling under these sections we are not going to give you a grant because these are the non patentable section that mean if you are falling under section 3 that mean your application is non patentable it is very clear so the first one is section 3a section 3a says an invention which is frivolous or which claims anything obviously contrary to well established natural laws that mean uh, for an example you can say that sir i will make a machine that will per- uh, perpetually that will give us grain so i will make a machine i i i have given the uh, specification i have given how to invent that machine we have invented a machine so do you feel is it possible because a machine cannot perpetually give uh, we cannot give us perpetually grain so that is not possible and uh, another way you can say that sir i have given i have invented something and the invention is e equal to mc square so e equal to mc square is well known Uh, so it it is a well known natural law so we cannot claim the natural laws or anything that is uh, that is well established in the nature that we cannot claim all these things so that is known uh, that is uh, falling under section 3 so any frivolous invention or which claim anything obviously contrary to the well established natural laws so that is not an invention so is per section 3a so what section 3b says 3b is quite important for all of you and section 3b and 3h that is quite important for all of you so what section 3b says as per the section an invention would not be patentable if it is immoral or against public order harmful to human animal or plant life or harmful to environment i think most of the some, uh, i have seen that some pesticides uh, really that are very good pesticides that are falling under section 3b and section 3b how it like you have di- discovered some atomic bombs or you have some discovered some, uh, invented some nuclear bomb so that is not also falling under section 3b even most of the application biotechnology applications uh, who are uh, like working on stem cells i am not saying that stem cells are not patentable so many applications related to stem cells are patentable so here is the twist that how you you are uh, playing with your words and how you are representing your case and how you are drafting your specification so section 3b says that anything that is immoral against public or order or harmful to human or any Uh, that is non patentable so stem cells that is uh, most of the stem cells that are isolated from human embryonic uh, uh, like um, that umbilical cords are uh, uh, stem cells are generally isolated from embryo embryo uh, umbilical cord so that if you are isolating any kind of stem cells from umbilical cord that mean you are killing someone what we feel that you are killing someone and it is against the public morality so that's why we are not giving the grant for any kind of stem cells that is isolated from particularly from umbilical cord or killing any any or uh, killing any animal or any human so that is falling under section 3 section 3c says discovery of living things or non living substance that is uh, already available in nature that mean most of the patent application what i have uh, usually uh, check that uh, examine that some of the applicant they came up with uh, one microorganism that means sir i have uh, i have a microorganism that can uh, have uh, the quality to degrade oil or that can have the quality to degrade this or that so it is beneficial for us so so when we asked that where you collected from this microorganism or where you isolated they simply said that we are isolated from uh, any some from delhi or from isolated from yamuna bank so if any microorganism that are already existed in nature whether it is a non knowing strain or it is a knowing strain but it is already existed in nature but you have just isolated this so that is that will fall under section 3c so we are not going to give a grant uh, if your microorganism or any living things or non living things that are al- already exist- stated in nature so that will fall under section 3c what 3d says that the mere discovery of a new form of a known substance that doesn't result in the enhancement of known efficacy of the substance or the mere discovery of any new property or new use of a known substance so that will fall under section 3d so section 3d you you won't believe that section only for section 3d our total indian pharmaceutical sector exists because section 3d is the protecting shield of indian generic pharma sector uh, there is a famous landmark case i will discuss in the later one if you allow me i will say here also that 
there is a famous uh, case that is Novartis versus Union of India. So in that Novartis versus Union of India, in that case, what happened? Uh, there is a yeah. breast cancer yeah. drug, drug that is known as Glivac, and that is uh, that is claimed by Novartis, that is a Swiss uh, pharma company, that's a very big MNC. And what happened in that case is Novartis filed a patent, uh, and it got rejected by Chennai Patent Office under the Section 3D, right? So what Section 3D says, mere discovery of new form of a known cell, right? So what is claimed is, uh, what is claimed is beta polymorph of a, a beta crystalline form of a imatinib mycelia. So imatinib mycelia is a chemical compound, it's a drug compound. And what, uh, uh, give, uh, sorry, what what is claimed is beta polymorph, that means beta crystalline form of a uh, imatinib mycelia. So section 3D says any new form of a known source, that means imatinib mycelia, that component is known to all of us. What Novartis says invented is beta crystalline form, right? So they claim that invention because it is a beta crystalline form. So whenever the patent office got, uh, rejected the case, they have said that uh, so beta crystalline form is somehow advantage. Like it has some uh, uh, like uh, uh, stability is more and, and and there are various kind of advantages they have shown. But again the patent office got reject, uh, rejected that case even they have gone to the IPAB then they have approached to the high court and then finally they have approached to the Supreme Court. Even at the Supreme Court they upheld the uh, stand of Indian patent office and also so rejected the case and in the Supreme Court in the in the final verdict they have said that this is written here uh, new property of a known use of a known substance or the mere use of a known process machine or apparatus unless such known process results in a new product or employed at least a new enhancement here the main point here is that the mere discovery of a new form of a known substance which doesn't result in the enhancement of known efficacy that means here the efficacy should be therapeutic efficacy I think uh, I am going a bit speed if I if you don't uh, get understand please stop at me at that time and you can ask again so I will be happy if you interrupt me so <coughs> so here I mean to say here is therapeutic effic efficacy here there is a word known as efficacy. So to analyze this word, Supreme Court has said that efficacy here means therapeutic efficacy. That means your beta crystalline form is fine. No worry. It has some advantages, but it doesn't have any therapeutic efficacy. It has some efficacy, but it doesn't have some therapeutic efficacy. That's why your patent will fall under section 3D and your patent should be reserved. And uh, I think nobody has lost that case and it lost around some billion of people. So this is how our non patentable section that means A, B, C, D helps in uh, uh, like saving the Indian IPR IP ecosystem. Okay, so let's go to the section 3E. What section 3E says that means substance obtained by the mere admixture resulting one in the aggregation of the properties of the components thereof or the process for producing the sub -sub substance. That means what it says that. For example, uh, turmeric is uh, quite known for old dealing. That means it has some anti-inflammatory purpose. Neem also, we all know that in Indian tradition, neem uh, that is also used uh, for various kind of anti-inflammation and all these things. So I will come up with a paste or I will come up with a uh, drug or I will come up with a, any kind of oil paint that consists of the properties of neem. So I will isolate turmeric and I will make a paste of turmeric and I will make a paste or otherwise I will isolate all the active component from neem and turmeric then I will mix it then I will say that see this is my invention because if you apply this uh, ointment on your wound it will get so uh, do you feel that it's really an invention it may be an invention but it, it will fall under section 3 what section 3 says that substance obtained for by a mere admixture resulting only in the aggregation of the property that means there is no synergistic effect it's only the aggregation of property turmeric is known neem is known what i did is i just combined all these things that's why it is a mere aggregation and if you do that it will fall under section 3e so that is also a non patentable section Okay. The next section is section 3F. I think it is not uh, important for all of you. It's a mere arrangement and rearrangement or duplication of known device. Uh, so that is, uh, I think it's not so much important for you. And in the field of ICR, that means agriculture, we know that tractors, we know that there are some so 
a crop showing or reaping machines. So if you just modify here and there, and if you just uh, rearranging the things that when it will be born under section three, that is we are not going to give a grant for section three vital for you people because section three is a method of agriculture or horticulture that is non pet. So anything that is related to method of agriculture or horticulture or any kind of method of agriculture that will fall under strictly fall under section three H and H per section three H we are not going to give you a grant for the method of agriculture and the method of you say that I know a method of cultivating a rice so please give a grant so I have uh, invented a something that a method of cultivating a rice so give a grant for you that means we have nothing the right of again 140 or 150 crores people and we are giving to grant to you so it's a monopoly right and tomorrow what happens you will say that no I am not going to disclose this method to anyone and I am not going to give the method I will uh, uh, take a legal action against all of you so what what happened we all will die out of starvation so that's why the method of agriculture and horticulture is not technical strictly it is following in a section 3h whatever so again if I going deep into the method of agriculture what can be uh, identified as the method of agriculture I mean, anything that can be practiced over the field, if you require any house, if you require any land, so that will fall under this method of agriculture. But if you do something in your lab, but if you uh, verify your watch, that way it may be allowed. So that's why patenting system is not pure technical. So that's why it's a technological juncture. So there is a legal part of it. So when you play with your words and how you know that how to draft your specification, so there are more possibilities to get a grant. It's like a negotiation kind of okay. So the thought, so I think it's a Eighth one, section three I. What section three I says? Any process for medicinal, surgical, curative, prophylactic, diagnostic, or therapeutic, or other treatment of human beings or animals to render them free of disease or to increase the economic value or that of their products. Now that are not patentable under section three I. So what section three I exactly mean that anything that is, that is simply it's known as method of treatment. So anything that is a method. So I know that. So that uh, so you are saying that your preamble of the invention is like a method of treating cancer or a method of treating something. A, a method of treating a disease of cow or a method of treating a disease in a plant. So that are not patentable. So because anything that is a method of treat, treat, uh, treatment that should be that should be available to public because because it's the important thing. So that's why it is non patentable. Any process of medicinal surgical curative propriety that is better strictly non patentable. So the last one is uh, so the uh, uh, ninth one is section three J. So what section three J says prevents an animal in whole any parts there other than microorganism but including seeds, variety and species and essentially biological <coughs> for the production and propagation of plants and animals. So you know section 3 and section 3 is little bit over. So what section 3 says is that means plants and animals or, or any part there. That means if you are claiming that sir I have a GMO modified rice. A GMO modified rice, a genetically modified rice. So if you say that like a genetically modified rice, so that is not better. If you say that it is a GMO, genetically modified rice, is not because it's plant, it's a plant or it's an animal whole or part there. Otherwise, you can say that I have a very good, uh, like, a, uh, that is also not patentable. Under. So, any plant, animal, whole or any part there, including seeds, that are non patentable. The last one, it is to the point of the non patentable, that is section 3b, which is known as traditional knowledge. Traditional knowledge says, section 3b says, that is anything, any knowledge that is falling under this traditional knowledge category. That means in India, what happened is the uh, here, the Ayurveda has evolved uh, various, like the homeopathy is we have uh, gone too far. So, mostly the Ayurveda, and uh, we in Indian uh, context and in Indian society, we have used some type of like Ayurvedic things and uh, um, plants, various plants as a medicinal, having some medicinal property since generation to generation. Since time immortals, we are using that, and that is falling under this traditional knowledge uh, category. So, there is a proper dedicated database that is known as TKDL data, traditional knowledge digital library and that is, uh, I will show you how this database works and I will give you some examples of this TKDL to that Twitter is very small. Yeah. So there is a proper database known as uh, uh, TKDL, just type uh, in Google that is known as TKDL. So when you type TKDL, yeah. So see, so this is the database. I think you will probably you can see that. So traditional knowledge digital library, representative database of Ayurvedic Yunani Siddha and uh, swearing a formulation, access to the full data of the patent office under TKDL license agreement. So, so this is how a TKDL database here. If you want to search about TKDL, so you just go to the simple search and you just search anything you you already have interest. See. There are so many documents. So 
uh, so there are so many documents around more than some um, uh, some lakhs of documents here and you will uh, get a bibliographic proof it's not like that you are saying just see this is that uh, document various documents uh, so there are uh, anything that is falling under this return, we are using it very traditionally from our uh, in indian society that will not that cannot be patented so that i mean to say so in the last point uh, so there are this is all about the non patentable section and then we will go to this deposition of biological material it is also a statutory order that mean so under section 104 uh, we say that whenever you are uh, having some microorganism or you are using any kind of biological material living biological material that is you are mentioning in the specification you have to deposit in in a, any nearby or internationally certified deposit so it should be uh, if it is unavailable to public and cannot be described adequately as per the provisions of act that means the material must be deposited with an in international depository authority under the budapest treaty so what happen if i give you if you allow me to give an example here that means suppose you have modified in in bacteria that means you are not isolated you just haven't isolated it you have isolated it but you have genetically modified it so if you genetically modified it is the result you mean that bola bali bol इंफॉर्मेशन विद रेस्पेक्ट टू दिन logical material used in the specification that mean you remember that whenever you are using some kind of biological material before applying the patent please get it deposited because after you apply after you file this complete specification it is not possible and your patent will surely get rejected that's why it is i request everyone if you have any kind of biological material that is not available to the public that mean you are genetically modifying and there is a particular or substantial human intervention to that microorganism please deposit it in any nearby depository you have get an accession number and in the complete specification please give that accession number your work will be done so time period the deposit must be made no later than filing the date of the patent application mentioning of the deposit must be made in the specification within the prescribed period so i think i have already said that 3 months from the filing of the date that mean see if you de- uh, if you do any kind of mistakes while filing the patent there are so many provisions that filing or filing this form uh, 137 that went under rule 137 condemnation of dealer filing this form or filing that form you can uh, rectify your mistake but some mistakes you cannot do uh, cannot rectify so one of that mistake is this biological material deposition that means some of the applicant i have seen in my life that in my career here is that some really good scientists they have really did something or they have really come up with an invention but what they they are unaware of this fact and they haven't deposited that but there are no provision of deposition of any biological material after your complete specification has been filed so please be careful whenever you are doing some kind of uh, uh, microbial research or any kind of like uh, genetically modified organism please deposit it before filing the complete specification but because after that you do not get any chance to make a deposit so biodiversity in ip filing and prosecuting patent application so the use of biological resources this is the last point and i think this is the last statutory order that is related to the biological resources that mean if you are using any kind of biological resources that is applicable in india or that is you are procured from india that mean you need to take the permission from nba that is national biodiversity authority so you have to apply before nba then nba will give the permission this is a nba mandate so here if you read the slides that in indian law requires patent applicants to seek approval from the national biodiversity authority before filing patent application that used biological is under the biological diversity act 2002 so nba approval is also not required for inventions that use disclosed bio waste bio waste is generated after the economic use of the biological resources material is existed so there are for every biological resource you need not to go for nba because suppose you are uh, that mean you are using some um, marketed product that you have isolated a neem solution you have purchased a neem water from any market so that you don't need to go for 
because that is already commercially available or it may be a bio waste so synthetically prepared biological material that may mention that use synthetically prepared biological material can also be filed without seeking prior approval from nb such material for example includes material of enzymes pigments gums and sucrose that i just told you that synthetically prepared that means for the neem water or any kind of particular enzyme that is isolated from any bacteria or any species that is readily available in the market so that you no need to go for nb but particularly suppose you are doing any invent uh, research and you have gone uh, to any forest a uh, nearby forest and you have isolated a very uh, like a rare kind of plant or plant uh, active compound then you have to go for nba or some kind of thing and remember there is a one difference between nba and that uh, deposition of biological material that means nba mean any biological research whether it is a plant or anything that is you are using or that mean you are using your research you need to take the permission from nba biological mean deposition mean if you are doing any research on the particular on the microbiological field and in your invention that uh, particular microbial uh, sorry particular microorganism is involved so you have to take the uh, you have to get the deposition but the deposition cannot be made later on that means after the due period after you filing on the patent application you cannot make it deposited but for the nba if you skip the nba there are there are some provisions that mean uh, before after filing form 137 or condemnation of delay before the grant of patent also you can uh, say that sorry sir i have forgotten i have just completely forgotten this then you can apply for nba and you get quality and the latest stage you can do it but for the deposition part you can't do it so this is the only difference i have to highlight here so there are so many case studies so first we will talk about the basmati rice and how this basmati rice actually uh, what happened and uh, in what happened in 1970 uh, 1997 in september there is a company known as rice tea that, that was granted a patent for alleged clear noble basmati rice actually basmati rice uh, usually uh, uh, cultivated in the uh, in, in the areas of punjab mostly in the punjab and haryana and punjab that means it's, it's already in pakistan or uh, half of the punjab is in in india so that is a very vital crop in the late uh, uh, 2000 or uh, in 2005 till 2005 or 10 so it is mostly widely cult cultivated and that is very aromatic rice we all know that you people know better than me so <coughs> so what happened a rice tea was granted a patent for alleged noble basmati lines and grains which were created from the crossing of the basmati germplasm of pakistani origin taken from an ex situ gin bank in the us with american long grain variety of rice rice tea is clear that the new variety have some better aroma grain length and other characteristics than the original basmati variety grown in india and pakistan and can be grown successfully in specified geographical areas in north america this came to notice that the government of india in february 1998 an interministerial committee was set up under the secretary department of industrial development to examine this issue the agriculture export development agency of the ministry of commerce in the government of india has been entrusted with the task of representing the rice export in the any examination based on the respect if it decided that so what happened in that case is uh, i will show it, uh, one uh, pdf yeah so this is the pdf so what happened see uh, can you see the pdf i think uh, basmati is the top quality rice from the punjab province in india the world means the fragrant air and the uh, and the rice is slender aromatic in uh, long grain variety that originated in this region and is a major export crop in 1997 the us patent office granted a patent to us farm rice tea and the patent number is this for the variety called texamati so they have crossed so here i have shown how they have uh, uh, reached to the texamati so they have uh, uh, grains which created from the crossing of basmati germplasm taken from an ex situ gen bank in us and the american long grain variety rice so they have crossed and they have make a hybrid uh, uh, kind of thing known as texamati rice that mean 20 claims and that patent application name is this and that has having 20 claims texamati rice is 16 claims similar to the indian basmati rice as per the geographical indication basmati is an indian rice variety which could not be patented by any other country so i think indian officers there are so many even us patent could affect annual basmati in india exports in india thus threaten the livelihood of thousands of punjabi farmers so when uh, the patent will granted uh, the veteran is granted for the texamati that mean they will not import our indian basmati so it will threat the livelihood of thousands of farmers so the brand and brand name of indian basmati will be largely affected it also true so agriculture and processed food product export development authority filed for revocation that mean this a apeda they have filed a revocation challenge of the patent granted to the rice tex 
at Texamati, that meant for the Rice Tech and Co. by the US Patent Office. Evidence, evidences from IARI, New Delhi, and the Directorate of Rice Riches Hyderabad prove that 16 claims are similar to traditional Indian Basmati rice. Rice Tech withdraw these 16 claims. However, US Patent Office has not revoked the patent. The patent was issued to Rice Tech with just four claims. That means when this uh, I think IARI or this APEDA, uh, they are the, the different branches of, uh, I think, Ministry of Commerce. They have represented the case and they filed a revocation challenge before US Patent Office because this uh, Basamati and Texamati are quite similar. Even they have come up with the uh, solution that, uh, similarity that 16 claims are as similar as uh, Indian granted claims to that US claim. So that's why oh, I think the 16 claims has been deleted by the US Patent Office and the text, uh, that rice tech uh, company has granted a uh, patent only with 4 claims. So this is one case study. And another one case study is also the turmeric. I think we have discussed it, but again it is in a, in a very detailed manner. So what happened in 1995? So this, this case is related to the TKD. That means traditionally knowledge uh, case. So in 1995, what happened? Two non-residential Indians at the University of Mississippi Medical Center Jackson. Uh, that means uh, uh, their name is Suman Kumar Das and Hari Harpi Chole. So they were granted an US patent. So they granted a US patent. Uh, that means the patent number is this. For turmeric to be used for healing wounds. So I have said that in, in India, we all know that whenever we have some cut, we used to apply turmeric. Because we all know that it has some wound healing or anti-inflammatory prop uh, like properties. So, when the, so they granted a patent for the user uh, to be used in the wound healing. The Indian Council for Scientific and Industrial Research, ESI, filed a re-examination case with the US Patent Office, challenging the patent on the grounds of prior art, that means existing public knowledge. So what uh, CSI did is, when they hear that or when they got to know that you, in US, uh, already have granted patent is there for turmeric so they filed a revocation challenge or they filed a re-examination case a re-examination case with the US patent office challenging because they challenge that this uh, wound healing properties are already known in the prior so we we in India we already know the turmeric is have some wind healing property so after that what happened the claim uh, had to be backed by written documentation claiming traditional wisdom CSR submitted a document proof in the form of research paper published in 1953 that means in India we have published a research paper in 1953 having uh, the turmeric as a wound healing property the CSR cited that document and the US patent office upheld the objection and cancelled the patent in 1997 so so this happened in 1997 even uh, they got the patent cancelled. So it happened again for the NIM that means in Europe. So this turmeric case happened in US. Again this NIM case happened in Europe. So what happened in the NIM? The NIM is a tree from India and other part of the Southern Asia. We all know that NIM is used as a natural medicine, as a fungicide, as a pesticide or as a fertilizer kind of thing. So what happened in 1994? The European Patent Office granted a patent uh, to the US chemical multinational company, company uh, WR Grace and Co and USDA for preparation of a fungicide derived from the seeds of the name. So it's a quite known uh, thing in the Indian culture that whenever the rice and any kind of pulses even or the rice that we are if, if you want to store a long time mm -hmm. so they are putting the neem uh, leaves in that or neem or something so neem is something it's naturally known as a fungicide or pesticide so the European Patent Office has granted the case I think in 19 uh, so Dr. Vandana Shiva Director of Research Foundation of Science and Technology or Ecology produced the evidence that means they have challenged again Indian people challenged the case in Europe they have produced the evidence of farmers using this knowledge for a long, long period and also gave the evidence and information of two Indian scientists conducting research on fungicide properties of neem before the patent has been granted. European Patent Office revoked the patent in 2000. So this can happen. So I mean to say these are the various case studies are there in the field of agriculture and biotechnology. So once, uh, so, it, uh, so so there are so many cases that patent has been granted then again after some time it has been revoked. Yeah, uh, so the protection, yeah, this is the last point. I think protection of plant varieties, farmer rights act, we, we, we will be a part act 2001. I think you all are aware of this act. An act to provide for the establishment of effective system for protection of plant varieties, the rights of farm, the rights for farmers, plant breeders, and to increase the development of new varieties of plant uh, for accelerated agriculture development in the country. That means if you are coming with a new variety of plant, it cannot be patented, but it can be protected under this PPVBR part. So it is necessary to protect plant breeders right to stimulate investment for research and development 
both in the public and private sector for the development of new plants that is quite obvious. Such protection will facilitate the growth of the seed industry in the country which will ensure the availability of high quality seeds and planting matter to the farmers. A protection of plant varieties and farmers' right authority, that means it is the Department of Agriculture and Farmer Welfare, Ministry of Agriculture and Farmer Welfare, Government of India. I think in the first inaugural session, uh, um, I think I forgot his name, uh, someone from your side, that means he is the DDC, I think. He said about all this IP rights and he said also, uh, given the stress to this uh, kind of protection, he said that, uh, sorry, said that all the IP rights are coming under the admit of Indian Patent Office or Minister. Of commerce and industries, but except this plant, uh, uh, this PBPFR Act. So, this is exclusively for uh, 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 people like uh, you that we nice here. So, this is today's all about the presentation. And if you have any kind of uh, question, so it's, it's better if you ask questions. Question because rather than reading the science, if you ask questions, I think it will be more beneficial and the uh, session will going to be a very good one. So now this uh, session is open to question and answer. Yeah. Uh, please ask if you have anything. So Diren, there is some uh, questions in the chat box. Okay, so okay, ma'am, I will look at the chat. You can just uh, go through it and. So can I have a question? This is uh, Saikmar from IVR. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Please. Yeah. So it was mentioned that. Uh, what is not patentable uh, when we were discussing that under point 3i you mentioned yeah. that method of treatment and prophylactics are not patentable right? so uh, that's curious because uh, there are uh, several vaccines that have been patented and from India too and from our institute also so how is that you say that uh, any treatment of prophylactic is not patentable sir uh, as far as your question is concerned so there are two kind of things that we use to grant a patent. So one is a product and one is a process. So if you if you divide total patenting procedure or the grant of a patent, so basically there are two things. Either it should be a product or it should be a process. Yeah. Or before then 2005, Indian patent office is not not granted any pro uh, any product patent. So after the TRIPS agreement, we have joined TRIPS and we have to follow the TRIPS agreement. We have to uh, uh, give the patent for pro a product also. So whatever the patent is granted to you or any kind of vaccine that is product that is not a method of treatment method of treatment that means it's a process it's not a product so that's why section 3i reads any process for the medical or surgical and curative or prophylactic diagnostic or therapeutic treatment it's not a product you can claim a vaccine that means your claim should read a vaccine composition for the this is or for this a vaccine composition containing comprising this but you cannot claim that a method of treating covid or you cannot claim that a method of treating cancer that cannot that cannot be allowed under section 3 well, i got that but regarding prophylactic you yes, yes. said that both the process and the product can be patented right you agree to that yeah but uh, this uh, sentence reads any process for prophylactic or diagnostic or therapeutic. Therapeutic uh, means uh, only a drug. It is not about the method of treatment. It is about that drug or a formulation. So also a diagnostic is a test that has been developed for diagnostic application. So these are things that are patentable uh, and we have had patents for uh, such products. Exactly sir. I am not denying that. I mean to say here is you should you can get a patent either for a product or for a process right that is clear right but for any diagnostic process or any medicinal surgical or curative process particularly you cannot get a patent under section 3 but you cannot you can get a product for for, for uh, can get a patent for product but a particular a patent for process but for different process you can get but medicinal or surgical or curative process you cannot get i mean to say just that only you can get a patent for product in medicinal field or in surgical field you can get a vaccine composition fine I'm not sure whether uh... sir sir may i uh, i think uh, what um, divin uh, want to say is that like for example there is a vaccine for some cattle so uh, the vaccine itself can be patented you can patent the vaccine but the method of uh, uh, Applying the vaccine, that is the process that you cannot patent. That well, is uh, well, that makes it clear. But yeah. then uh, the process of manufacturing or producing the vaccine is also patentable and the product is also patentable if yes. there is an overtake in it. But yes. not the method of administering a vaccine. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. That is how it should be. One yes. more here on the 3J. 
थ्री जे यू से हियर इन होल और एनी पार्ट देर ऑफ अदर देन माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम मीनिंग अदर देन माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम वट यू मीन हियर और माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम्स आर पेटेंटेबल या डेफिनेटली माइक्रो ऑर्गेनिजम्स आर पेटेंटेबल सब्जेक्ट टू वन कंडीशन दैट It should not be isolated. Microorganisms here under section three is that you are clear that microorganisms are patentable, right? But whenever you isolated the microorganisms, simply if you isolated the microorganisms, it will fall under section three C again. So that's why what you have to do is either it's there should be a particular a substantial human intervention or it should be genetically modified. So if you do any kind of genetically modification, it can be patentable. Yeah. So that qualifying word can be put here uh, for the sake of clarity. That is. Yeah. Sure. इंडिविजुअल Diet or a clinical condition is developed, and it is shown through studies that the diet helps in animals during that particular disease. Will the formulated diet patentable? Okay, the, that's why I said that you have to play with the words. The formulated diet is patentable. I should not say all this vocabulary. The formulated diet can be patentable, but you should not try uh, like the claim should not be read like that. The formulated diet to uh, uh, heal any diseases uh, for the uh, for anything that will. See in section three, it is clear that uh, also section three, it says that human beings, animals, to render them free of disease or to increase their economic value, right? So you are trying to heal some animal. It's a betterment for an animal. That means it will fall under section three. Right? But you have to play with the words. You say that a particular human a nutritional diet. You have developed invented a particular nutritional diet. So that will be okay. It is up. It is up to you that how you draft your specification. And the form of the diet uh, can be better. No, it should be. It should cl- uh, clarify about the novelty and inventive steps and industrial applicability. Then it can be better. If a drug is repurposed for treatment of a new disease. For the which there is no effective therapeutics is available. Can it be patented? The answer is no because ah uh, mere use that means don't use of it. Ah uh, sorry, second use of a known substance that is not patentable. That means for an example, paracetamol is a drug. Paracetamol is a drug. Be known as analgesic and antipyretic. I mean, we all know that whenever we are having fever, we we are getting paracetamol. That's fine. That is a known. But sometimes, what happened today? A researcher or some researcher is finalized or they came came up with the uh, final result that paracetamol also helps in treating cancer. Maybe it happened. So when we we cannot get a patent again on paracetamol to treat cancer because it's the second use use of known substance. So that is not patentable under Section 3D. So if it is uh, repurposed for the treatment of a new Disease. That means the drug is known. Again, it is repurposed for the treatment of new disease. So the disease is new. You are using the same drug for a particular other disease. So I think that is non-patentable. Ah, uh, Dhiren, is it the case in case of uh, Remdesivir, uh, the CSCR uh, drug, which was repurposed for COVID? I think same way. Exactly, I don't know, but I think this case is same. So here it is written uh, new property or new use of for a known substance. It is highlighted here. That means new property or new Use of a known so that drug is known, but it's a new use. Again, there is the question: Is a nutritional consisting of a beneficial microbe and plant secondary metabolites with the better results than individual component patentable? Of course, patentable man. It's of course patentable. So exactly here in the last line, you have uh, you have already asked the question. You have said the answer also. If it is giving the better result than the individual component, then it should be patentable. It must be patentable. That means that individual component is known as so. So if you are just adding Mixing it, we are not giving you a grant. But if you are administering something and it is come up with a synergistic effect, that means it lost its individual effect and it 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 was coming up with a greater effect, a greater benefit. Then we are going to give a grant for that. So that better result you have showed, showed us uh, wrote that the better result, that better result should be significant. That's why we are using significant technical advancement. So that if we are feeling that it is significant, then we can. Uh, so that means there is a method of isolating uh, plasmid from Uh, bacteria. Uh, so in this, in a particular method that is already available in the prior art. For example, I am saying what is available in the prior art. You can isolate a bacteria, uh, plasmids from bacteria in one hour. 
but you have developed a method where you can isolate the bacteria isolate the plasmid from the bacteria in 1.1 hour that means you are uh, sorry in night uh, in uh, 50 minutes so there is uh, one prior that is they are isolating in one hour and you are isolating in 55 minutes so you can say that my method is bit uh, advanced because I am taking 5 minutes less. So can you say that it's an advancement? It's of course an advancement but it's not significant. That's why if there is no significant technical advancement, it will fall under the ambit of inventive state. We have any other questions? Uh, yeah. Any other questions if the participants want to ask? Yeah, ma'am. From my side. <coughs> Hello. Yes, yes sir. Uh, Dr. Achar Singh from NDFGR Lucknow. Uh, uh, he had demonstrated a neem case. Uh, example of neem. Uh, there was one patent granted and that was uh, cancelled. But I think there is a one case of uh, uh, something agent was uh, extracted from the product and that is patented still by USA or some other party. Is it so? So I don't know that case, but if there is still, uh, if you feel like there is a case, you can just challenge that case from Indian side. It would be, I would be happy or our office will be very grateful. But challenge because as per our TKDL uh, agreement so this is yeah. a traditional loan I, if you is it uh, fine for us if you give us that uh, patent application name that I, we will also search for uh, that and yeah, uh, thank you. In a standard lecture, there was a in Google search or Google patent, you will find there is a one agent identified by a firm which increases the insecticidal property more than uh, two weeks from normal hour. That's why uh, he has got patent. Is it okay. so? If so, then you can search. Okay, so if they just use neem as a small component, yeah. because uh, for the pesticide, they have used so many uh, chemicals. And yeah. also with that, along with that, if they have used name, then that is fine. Uh, but if particularly if they are using name in, as a major component, then it can be objected. Still, you can have the challenge, you have the opportunity to object it up to the challenge. He has extracted one uh, identified agent that is a increases the insecticidal property like that. Uh, there is one pit. Okay, they have isolated some active component from neem and they yeah, have yeah. developed an agent. Yeah, that is like may happen, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. So, anyone else? Uh, madam, I have one question. Sure, sir. Uh, yeah, please it, identify yourself. Yeah, Bala Subramanian. Yeah, I am Dr. Bala Subramanian. Yes, sir. Uh, in fact, actually, in 2011, a patent has been awarded to patent was awarded to do this institute, and it is supposed to be renewed. Uh, I mean, after uh, six, seven years or something. Now it is delayed by a week or something. It is supposed to be, I mean, renewed by August first. Whether any with a extra penalty or something like that, whether it can be renewed? Yes, sir. Of course, it can be renewed. So you have to contact Kolkata Rex. Or uh, your patent is filed. Your office is at in Chennai. No, our, ours is uh, Chennai. Uh, I mean, IPO. Okay, so Chennai IPO. So I will give the mail ID of Chennai Rex. So you okay. can just uh, just approach them. Otherwise, you can search. Uh, the uh, website of uh, so the mail id of chennai rx to our website you can okay. apply then you can just mail there that my patent has been uh, my annuity fee is due to pay and uh, i haven't renewed my patent it's already been late so uh, you can file uh, a continuation of delay like application that will under section 137 and you can pay the fees and they will renew it no no problems okay thank you so anyone else Okay, if uh, no more questions, um, so yeah, okay. So, uh, I from my side, I would like to thank uh, uh, Mr. Dhiren Patnaik for uh, giving this uh, um, uh, lectures or session, taking this session and uh, giving us uh, the inputs about the, uh, the especially the uh, novelty inventive step and industrial applications of uh, patents. So, he, uh, uh, I think cleared a lot of doubts and then um, about like what can be patented, what cannot be patented, especially this section 3B, C, D and uh, J and I, which is very important for the agriculture sector. And uh, also uh, some of the case studies, he, he discussed about uh, the basmati as well as the turmeric, uh, that how how uh, we can also make use of TKDL. Uh, if uh, knowing about the traditional knowledge and using that database. So uh, thank you very much, Dhirenji, uh, for taking this session and uh, 
giving uh, or imparting this knowledge to our participants so with this uh, we come to the end of this uh, webinar series and uh, uh, i i uh, uh, would like to first uh, ask if uh, the, before uh, i give it to ipo kolkata to uh, give some uh, information regarding the certificates of the participants i would like to uh, invite uh, maybe one or two participants uh, maybe dr bala uh, to just give your feedback about this webinar series let me tell you this webinar series uh, hosted by ipo kolkata uh, was uh, mostly uh, for Uh, the um, basic level especially the ip awareness among students as well as our researchers and young prof uh, professors or faculty so uh, or our itmu members the new members who joined the itmu and so it was aimed that we can reach uh, uh, and have this awareness among them so maybe you can just uh, maybe one or two persons somebody from uh, dr bala from icr and someone from the agriculture university Side, side, Dr. Bala, you may like to say something. You give your feedback very short. In yeah, at the outset, I would like to thank uh, all the, I mean, presenter, especially this particular. Uh, program uh, before joining for this particular webinar i thought that actually it will be in a depth so that i can go into the detail before joining here i have some knowledge about it and uh, more information regarding ipr and other things i would get like that i joined in this particular program but later on i understood it's purely a basic thing and but one thing and uh, the fundamental things actually it's very important and it is taught in a very simpler manner almost all the presenters uh, starting from the first day till uh, today everything was presented in a very simple way and uh, majority of our uh, participant would have understood what are the present procedure available in india to get the patent awarded in different arena like patent uh, i mean ipr design patent and uh, i mean other things and uh, much more than that one the questions are answered on the site i mean immediately whether uh, i can say that uh, mr uh, arnab bhattacharya whenever i raised question within a short period he used to answer for that one and it's quite quite convincing that is the one thing we expected and uh, we are enhancing your knowledge in the field of ipr that's the one thing i am very much thankful to the i mean host organization as well as uh, the uh, i mean ipo kolkata for taking uh, uh, effort to communicate to all the scientists and uh, even other uh, uh, participants uh, the simplest way and to make them to understand the basics of ipr i am thankful very i mean thankful to uh, i mean icr headquarters and at the same time ipo kolkata for uh, arranging this particular uh, web Thank you. Uh, thank you, thank you, Doctor Bala. Anyone from Agriculture University or any students, uh, if they want to speak, they can unmute yourself or raise your hands. Okay, okay. If not, uh, I would uh, like to uh, hand over to IPO Kolkata. Especially uh, Arnab ji, you can just um, uh, tell something about the participants that uh, how they are going to get the certificates. and thank you all the participants for their active participation in this and uh, regarding the certificates issue uh, the all the registered participants will get the certificates in their registered email ids okay it will be delivered uh, today okay we are trying to get it delivered uh, there is one i just want to have uh, some confusion uh, arnab ji like i think many we had uh, more number of registrations but uh, the number of uh, participants who have joined the um, the sessions are less so i don't know how you are going to okay ma'am not on uh... so you can just see because number of registrations were much more than those who have joined the sessions yeah okay fine so uh, i would now like to invite uh, dr s s rathore um, our um, my co um, whole, uh, like coordinator from nahab um, icr nahab so uh, for the vote of thanks so dr. thank rathore. you uh, i am here only yeah thank you dr manju good morning everyone So now we have reached to the concluding part of the very important training program IPR. I'm audible. Hello. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. So now we have reached to the concluding part of the this very important training program on IPR. This is very important because these innovations they are very basis for the development and growth in the economy. The more is more are the innovation, better is the economy. So means to have the vibrant, innovate, innovative ecosystem in any country. We need to protect the interests of the innovators. In that context, the 
protection of the intellectual property rights is very very well chosen best selected topic so at the outset i convey my sincere thanks to the honorable deputy director general agriculture education and also the national national director for the national agriculture higher education project at rc agrawal sir who has guided us and mentored to make this program a very successful program i am also very much thankful to our adg uh, dr k sinamashar who is also looking after the intellectual property right and this uh, technology management in icr that is something which is very important unit in the icr system and he is the sole uh, having the sole responsibility with his team to put up the intellectual property right especially concerned to the agriculture field so i am it's also my privilege to convey my sincere thanks to all the eminent speakers from the exam uh, exam examiner they are mostly they are the examiner of the patent and and design in ipo kolkata so i convey my sincere thanks to mr dheeren panaik ji dr um, uh, mr ayush uh, misra ji mr mohammad soheb ji and also mr nikhil rajan who have delivered the uh, this uh, their presentation and uh, information on various aspect of the protection of the intellectual property right and our many of the participants they take, they have taken the very keen interest uh, to know more about this uh, the, the, the mechanism which has been framed for the protection of the intellectual property rights i also convey my sincere thanks to my program coordinator like mr arunda bhattacharji he is the examiner of the patents and design a patent office kolkata dr uh, manju garat is a principal scientist and a poster in the intellectual property rights and technology management unit of icr dr vikram singh is the senior scientist in ip and tm unit of the icr and mostly you see in the icr they are, they are the people they are responsible for uh, creating the more awareness on this on the issues and we are i am also very much thankful to the nepam under this we have taken this intellectual property right awareness webinar series so at the last but not the least the eminent or the esteemed participants without their active involvement it was not possible to have a very successful training program on any subject so i also ex express my sincere gratitude to all these distinguished and all the esteemed participants who has taken the very active role and they have participated discussed many of the issues in this training program i thank everyone who has di directly or indirectly helped in conduct of the successful conduct of this training program so thank you thank you very much thank you everyone thank you so much